Has anybody ever taken you to maybe a um, small group Bible study or maybe a week of prayer? Has anybody ever taken you to maybe like one of those evangelistic campaigns at a church? Uh, maybe a Sabbath school class? Something where you really feel like you're being drawn to it, where the words being spoken are really pulling you, drawing you. Ever felt like that? In Acts chapter 26, we see that um, Paul finds himself before some very important people. Uh, some decisions are going to be made, and Paul presenting, is presenting a case. Now, it's interesting how he chooses to go about this case. Let's pick it up with verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue on to this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Now, it's not going to be the focus of this video, but did you notice what Paul was doing, or what he said he was doing? witnessing to both small and great. So for a little reflection, I think it's worthy to ask, is that something we are doing? So, Paul's in front of people, important people. Now he's gonna address one of them. Now sometimes um, when spiritual words are being used for us, sometimes they're hard to understand for whatever reason. Uh, sometimes we don't agree with it. And sometimes a person trying to speak to us about these things isn't it true that sometimes they seem a little crazy, maybe sometimes a little bit different, just a little, yeah, a little bit different. Uh, well, such was the case with this example. Let's uh, go to verse 24, it says, And as, as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth words of truth and soberness. See, Paul knew what he was doing, and again, he had something he was trying to accomplish. So, he addresses a king next. He moves on from Festus to Agrippa. Let's see what the conversation looks like now. And remember, Paul has spent much time before what we're reading now explaining what he was explaining. And you're welcome to read that. In fact, I encourage you to read that when you can. So, verse 27. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? The prophets? I know that thou believest. And then the king says these words. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You know, you can keep reading. This king isn't mentioned much anymore. I'm not sure he is. Um, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Has that been the language? Um, in some of our mouths, uh, from some of our tongue, almost you convinced me to stay here. You know, it sounded real nice. And, um, you know, I felt it. These are words of truth. It was demonstrated. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and almost I want to stay, but, you know, I just rather do something else. Or I'm not ready yet. Or I got to do something first. Or maybe next time. Or, you know, things just don't seem that way that I can, uh, things don't seem in such a way that I can really attend right now. Uh, maybe next time or maybe another week or you know what maybe maybe once I get a little bit older um, does that sound familiar almost almost you persuaded me so the question that can be asked is why almost see in chapter 6 there was another person teaching speaking spiritual things this time we're looking at Jesus um, is going to pick up on verse 66, John 6, and then we're going to see. Now, if he was speaking spiritual things, um, before this, there was um, many disciples. There were more than 12. And after hearing these words, something very interesting happened. Uh, maybe not what you and I would have expected. See, a lot of them started walking with him no more. A lot of them turned around and left. They found it either difficult to understand. Some of them were offended. Now, I wonder why. Jesus was speaking spiritual things, and we all know how he talked. He never talked to hurt nobody. He talked to win them over, and the Holy Spirit speaking to their hearts would have assisted Jesus in this. So, we got some questions to ask, right? Not towards the outside, but towards the inside. So, now we know that is going on. And again, you're welcome to read the context before. We're going to start on verse 66. It says this. 
From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So when we are in these places, in a Bible study, in a class, um, listening to a sermon, are we going to be almost persuaded? Are we going to come to the realization, understand and accept that it is only through this book that we can find Jesus who offers us eternal life and say something along the lines of, yeah, I choose that. Something to think about, as always, no? Something to pray about as well.